So guys, AK-12 version M1. This is the very first modernization of the AK-12. So finally, AK-12 M1. It was found in dugout uh, in, on Russian position with stuck casing inside. So this is first hint. Anyway, it was collected. A very, very beautiful example of the first modernization of AK-12 M. This sling, I believe, is uh, also made from the AK-12 set. It's Magpul knockoff, okay? You have this first carabine in front, together with the slip uh, sling loop. It does have this cross bolt safe. After you can unhook it and hook it on this part. That way you're creating uh, one point sling. So basically it's like Magpul. On the rear it's secured with the QD mount. We will go from front to the back again. Think that they left out on the M1 variant, that is after that. They make the muscle device not removable, okay? Because here, unlike the traditional AK-74, it does not have a thread. It has just uh, basically bayonet type of uh, setup. So here is your muzzle, like so. Here is your modernized muscle device. You put it on like so and just turn. And it secures. Uh, the benefit is that it's like much quicker. I guess you can get more debris bef before it becomes stuck like uh, on 74. After you need to take torch, heat it up and undo it. With this, the situation is probably a little bit better, but it really moves a lot and I bet uh, it causing a little bit more spread on your grouping. Here is bayonet lock, standard affair. Here is lock for your GP25 grenade launcher that you can attach. Then here we have removable plug on the gas gas uh, on the gas block. We just press the latch, and with pressure, the, the fit is relatively snug. We can remove it, and we can clean from the front. So I think that's a good stuff. It's a definitely good option. Did it worth the trouble of redesigning it? Uh, I'm not sure. We put it the plug back. Okay, so generally the AK-74 type muscle brakes are amazing, extremely effective, you will see in the footage. The sling loop moved to the front on the gas block itself. Then we have fixed gas tube. We can't remove this one. Then we have the plastic handguard. That for me it works really good. But uh, if you for example put, put pack 15s, the zero would not be that great on the lasers. But still, I think it will be manageable, like for hitting a figure on 25 meters, even if you put pack 15 on it, why not, okay, it will work. You can put your front grip on, which I'm not a big fan of. Generally, like the ergonomy and the heat isolation, because there is heat shield in the handguard as well, work amazing. Then, how do you disassemble the rifle? It's with this level, you move this on side, and with upward pressure, you lift the cover. Apparently in this M version they little bit redesigned the rear, so now your optic should hold zero. I had EOTech on it, it held zero well. Now, accuracy of this rifle. I borrowed this rifle to my friend that is very good sharpshooter, just first group with it, and it was around 3 MOA, so it's yes, somewhere between 2-3 MOA rifle, which for me, in my opinion, for a combat rifle, assault rifle is great. You don't really need more, in my opinion. Now, AK-12 magazines. Those were a really priced trophy at the start of this conflict. But currently you can even buy them in military shops. Like, guys uh, do raids, do assaults, getting ton of those, they just go and sell them to the shop and you can buy them for less than $50. Now, design of the magazine. Those are a little bit snugger fit than the standard AK-74 magazines. You have these witness windows also and flat on the bottom. In my opinion, the old pattern of magazine, the black plastic, was much better. 
because these translucent parts they tend to crack a lot you can like remove the entire translucent part remove it out but uh, yes this is just one more point where it can break and i don't really need the witness holes it's not a good cool feature for me yes you can rest this on the ground like with the flat portion but you can do it with the normal mag as well so no problem there but overall it's nice magazine slightly updated was it necessary i don't think so does it look very nice modern yes it does now controversial feature is the two round burst on the controls the selector you you can see the new pedal here and the problem is that on normal ak-74 the tension provided on the selector is by the entire selector it's also like leaf spring here there is second leaf spring under it riveted with these two rivets so it's much harder to fine-tune the weapon but i must say even with my finger just no problem and it jumps straight away on the single shot so not bad for me really all the way down it looks like yeah a little bit broken but it's not broken that's how it should be you have single shot you go slightly up you have two round burst they left that left that uh, feature out on the latest modernization as well for me it's okay yeah the philosophy behind it is of course everybody tried it two round bursts three round bursts always do it on one generation of any rifle and then just leave it okay the same like on polish tantal assault rifle Okay, they tried it after they make barrel without it. All right, so two round burst. Holding the trigger. One. Second catches. Also, certain mean and nasty geezers took the trigger mechanism from AK-12 and put it in the AK-74, just dremeling out the little piece of metal that would prevent the selector go all the way down and just cut little dimple in receiver. So yes, you can actually take the trigger system from AK-12, make few minor adjustment and use the two round burst feature in your AK-74 or AKM for that matter. So it's a gimmick, but it works. Also, when you like half press, uh, you get just single shot. The ratchet mechanism inside resets completely. So when you press fully, after you get two shots again and not one shot, if you know what I mean. So I think it's engineered well. The system, of course, then you go a little bit more up, you get the traditional full auto that we all love, and then you go up and you are safe. So really the safety, no problem for me, really. Then we have redesigned trigger guard and redesigned pistol grip. The pistol grip, for, in my opinion, is great. Very good ergonomic, unexpected actually. The trigger guard, yeah, why not? Let's make it plastic. The magazine latch, amazing. I shoot so much AK-74 in my life that this is just so natural to me and I just love it. I love the rock-in style of magazines, just good. Then we have a cleaning kit. When, we, when you press this, like on uh, mag release on pistol, here you release your cleaning kit. I'm pressing, pulling it out. Here is my cleaning kit with my brushes. Now the obvious question, where is the cleaning rod on this AK-12 rifle? Answer is there is not. The AK-12M rod is carried in the pouch, picture attached. We have the rear sight with little drum. So guys, this is how you change the sight setting on AK-12. You press down on the rear sight itself and on the drum you choose what you want. So for example, now I will choose, let's say, the universal 0P, it goes like this. When I go all the way up to 800 meters, you can see how much higher the peep sight is. And when I go to the 100 meters, you see how low the peep sight is, but you can still see on the sides without any problem. And it's a peep sight, finally. And it's a such huge advantage for me. For some people, this U-notch sight, traditional AK-74 works the best. For me, this is just a huge game changer and I love this feature. Here, the rear, it's like enforced. There are two hooks that hooking on the top cover. 
So really, there is no wobble at all. It's very nice, tight, snug fit. Now to the stock. The stock is adjustable by this sledge. We just press it sideways, pull it all the way up. We're getting six positions. They are even marked here. It's not overly long when fully extended, still standard. And it's not overly short when collapsed. So the range is perfect, really. Like for very heavy ballistic, I go like this. I'm happy. When I shoot without any body armor, I go all the way out and getting perfect side picture. Now, you can also side fold this stock after pressing this button. It's a little bit snug, it won't a little bit walk in. Then there is this little ratchet mechanism. I force it and now it's actually even secured so I can have it on my back like so with the sling and it holds. To unfold the stock, this is uh, new for this type of rifle. You have this level inside that you press down on. So I just a little bit pressure, unfold the stock, slap it like so. Now the rubber pad, it's good, it's slim that way, so that's perfect for me. And it's like relatively tall, wide. So you can use it like, like so, resting it just on the lower portion when you use the mechanical sides. Uh, AK-12 is considered universally by the internet community as not a good assault rifle and I must disagree. I would choose this rifle over AK-74 just because I have the option to mount lights, to mount optics quickly. Yes, not that accurate, but I don't need accuracy, I need the gun to work. So guys, let's make an overview about the AK-12. Muscle brake works amazingly. Having the Pack 15 on hand guard, the movement is quite big, but still on 25 meters it will guide you, the laser beam. So it's like on the edge or just slightly behind the edge of usability. It is what it is. I'm sure there, there are in Russia aftermarket solution for this. So far, now when I shoot much more, still zero malfunctions with the rifle. So overall, AK-12 actually big thumbs up. Once they fix the handguard wobble issue, it will be unfortunately very good assault rifle.